So the Scotsman, having satisfied her faithful audience with yet another Oscar-winning performance, strolls in rather leisurely fashion to a curtain call at York. Beautiful. This is very romantic. Steam trains. I don't know what it is. Yes. Fast, you know. I'm glad to be able to tell my children I was I travelled on a train pulled by flying Scotsman. I must say it's quite something. We're going on to Tomkinson School Days now, which is part of mm. a series called Ripping Yarns. Yes, yes. Lovely. That's, I mean, just the name Ripping Yarns is redolent with uh, sort of gung-ho. That's right. Theory. I don't know when, like the 20s, is it? Ripping and pluck and mm. all sort of yeah. words were, were in vogue. I think in the, in the 20s and 30s, though, right into the 1950s and 60s. And even nowadays, people still find an inexhaustible supply of good stories in what happens at public schools or boarding schools. But it is a very odd society, you probably know yourself. I do. There one is for nine months of the year stuck with these people, these very strange masters, extraordinary rules whereby you can have one button undone the first year, two buttons if you've been there two years, three months if you've been there three years, hand in one pocket if you've been there six months, you know. You can hop across the grass every third day, you know, during Founders Week or something like that. <laughs> totally extraordinary. So although this Tomkinson school day story is pretty silly, there is, deep down, a grain of truth in it, isn't there? Yes, well, I mean, people weren't nailed to the walls at <laughs> the school I went to. Lucky, well, not while I was there, anyway. Lucky enough to be nailed to the walls. That's lucky enough, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it would have looked very good on the prospectus, I'm sure, because I think a lot of parents are sent there their children there to have a really awful time. Eric Idle had a wonderful line about someone saying about public school, you know, did no harm, made a man out of me, made a man out of my wife. <laughs> the days always began the same way. We were woken by our stations at 3.30, <laughs> and after two games of football, we assembled for morning prayers in Big Hall. Oh Lord, we give thee humble and hearty thanks for this thy gift of discipline knowing that it is only through the constraints of others that we come to know ourselves, and only through true misery can we find true contentment. <laughs> we ask thee especially today, O oh Lord, to remember the owner, trainer, and rider of Doncaster Boy in the 415 at Chepsley. <laughs> and may the fire of thy just and awful wrath fall upon Biggs, Normanton, Potter Minor, and Tookie. Amen, amen. <laughs> It has come to my knowledge that certain boys have been helping masters to escape. <laughs> Small parts of a glider have been found in the History 6 form library, and this must not repeat. How I long to be able to hop like the second year boys, <laughs> and not to have to ask permission to breathe out after 10.30. <laughs> and how I dreaded, as we all did, the sight of Grayson, the school bully. He had twice won the public school's bullying cup, and last year beat the extraordinarily vicious Ackroyd of Charterhouse at a kick-in of fags at the Hurlingham Club. <laughs> Say, sorry, Grayson. You call me school bully, you miserable little tick. <laughs> In between terms at the appalling Greybridge Cool. Yeah. They were, of course, the school holidays. That, uh, that's also been a subject for your dramatic activities. Yes. Yeah, I used to spend our holidays in East Anglia, which is where my father was from. He really couldn't wait to get away from Sheffield and go to East Anglia. So it made for a very long, torturous journey in the old car, stopping at various places. We stopped at various stops for uh, public toilets. So I knew the journey by the various sort of public toilets on the way. You always went to the same place for your holidays? Well, two places. We went to Sheringham in Norfolk for ten years, and then Southwold for about, in Suffolk for about five or six years after that. Yes, it was very, my father was very regular. It's always mm. difficult to tell. <laughs> I'm sure he was. He wasn't, certainly <laughs> yes. as a play, he was a great deal of all brand under discussion. Oh, exactly. Right. Yes. Yes. yes, artistic life. <laughs> it's always difficult to tell how much of a story like this is the truth, in other words, is purely autobiographical, and how much of it is made up. I mean, how like your mum and dad are these two people? Well, when I was writing the story, I suppose I mold, modelled them reasonably closely on my own parents, but on incidents that happened, really, rather than deep exploration of their characters. But then when you get two actors along, like John Lester and Pat Hayward, as good as they are, they, they 
they become different characters, they become themselves. So it was, it was detached a little from my own parents, and the boy equally was not me, but it was someone sort of going through the same sort of experiences that I went through, which is that, you know, that difficult business of going on holiday when you're actually too old to be with your parents, you think. Your parents think you're too young to go anywhere on your own. So it's this curious sort of uh, halfway house. When you spent long evenings on your holidays with your parents playing Scrabble, did your father cheat? Well, he had a very creative way of playing Scrabble and using the dictionary. Did he? He used the dictionary as a weapon against the rest of us. He didn't think that was what it was about. Um, employed various strategies, none of which ever worked. It always worked. Come on, Dad. All right, all right, don't bash me. Is there such a word as ig? Ig? I don't think so. I'm sure there is. I think it's the word from which the diminutive igloo is derived. An ig, I think you'll find, is a large Eskimo hall and Igloos are the smaller subsidiary dwellings. There's no such word. That's what you said about ab. Pass me that dictionary, will you, Mother? <laughs> ig, 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 ig. Mm, what a perfectly useless dictionary. Ah, oh, hang on. Hang on. Yes. This is what I was thinking of. <clears throat> yes, this is the word I meant. Igbo. Igbo? It, it's a variation of Igbo, the language and tribe of southeastern Nigeria. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Double word score, 14. So it's... Sixteen, please, Richard. A play uh, written by Michael Palin, East of Ipswich. Do you know what Igbo means? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Well, journey's end. Michael Palin, thank you very much for being a smashing guest on with I've enjoyed, enjoyed it. It's been terrific. Can we go any further? No. We're so stopping. This is our one. Thank you. And it's journey's end for this edition of Windmill 2. There's just time for one more journey.